facts, however, some of them more legitimate than others. One is to run secret wars. Another thing is to disseminate propaganda to influence people's minds. And this is a major function of the CIA. And uh, unfortunately, of course, it overlaps into the gathering of information. You, you, you have contact with a journalist, you will give him true stories, you'll get information from him, you'll also give him false stories. You also work on their human vulnerabilities to recruit them in a classic sense, to make them your agent so that you can control what they do, so you don't have to set them up sort of, you know, by, by putting one over on them. So you can say, here, plant this one next Tuesday. Can you do this with responsible reporters? Yes, the church committee brought it out in 1975, and then Woodward and Bernstein put an article in Rolling Stone a couple of years later. Uh, 400 journalists cooperating with the CIA, uh, including some of the biggest names in the business, mm -hmm. to consciously introduce the stories into the press. Well, give me a concrete example of how you use the press this way. Well, for example, in my, my war, the Angola war that I helped to manage, uh, one third of my staff was propaganda. Uh, I had propagandists all over the world, principally in London, Kinshasa, and Zambia. We, were, we would take stories which we would write and put them in the Zambia Times and then pull them out and send them to a, a journalist on our payroll in Europe but his cover story, you see, would be that he, would, he had gotten them from his stringer in Lusaka, who had gotten them from the Zambia Times. But after that point, the journalists, uh, Reuters and AFP, uh, the management was not witting of it. Now, our contact man in Europe was, and we pumped l just, just dozens of stories about Cuban atrocities, Cuban rapists. But we didn't know of one single atrocity committed by the Cubans. It was pure, raw, false propaganda to to create a, an illusion of communists, you know, eating babies for breakfast.